Hi, this one my from Spitfire Audio and I'm doing an action on the long-awaited studio strings. We went back into Linta's Air Studios, but instead of going to the hall, we went into Studio One, which houses a custom-made historic Neef desk. It also means we went through a completely new signal path. And for this one, we also involved the top engineer Simon Rhodes, who worked on a long list of films, including Avatar, Spectre, Grand Budapest Hotel, and so on. What Studio One allowed us to do is come up with a string library that has a much, much drier sound. And it also offers you a lot more control of which kind of reverb you want to put on and how much you want to put on those strings. So we have two different versions of Studio Strings. We have the core string library and then we also have the professional library. The professional has extra microphone positionings, extra mixes, more articulations. Uh, bigger ensembles, and more specifically, we now have a Divisi section in there as well. I, however, was concentrating on the core library, so if you want to know more about the professional one, go over to Paul Thompson's walkthrough, who will give you a much more detailed insight. The first sound that I've used is from the second violins, a spiccato patch. So the next one is our lovely flautande patch. And I've also used the pizzicato from the double bass. really nice full round sound and then I also used spiccatos in the cellis so what I've done here compositionally is I started with the spiccatos and came up with a chord progression that I continued and then put a melody on top of that had a responsive phrase from the cellis and then once I had that down, I put a bass line on top of that. For the next section, I've used some tremolo sol pont. And whilst we're here, I want to show you the different tremolos that we have. So there's a normal tremolo. And then we have console tremolo. Seal pond I've just shown you. And then we also have a console seal pond tremolo over here. So loads of lovely textures within the tremolo themselves. And I also want to play to you the trills, although I haven't really made use of them in this composition. So we've got some major seconds. Major thirds. Minor seconds. Minor thirds. And also some perfect fourth. And on top of that, you also then get some measured tremolos. Then over here, I've used some legato in the double bass.
and also some legatos in the first violin. I think a really agile and really responsive especially and I loved writing runs with them and rather than playing them to you on the keyboard I'm just going to play what I have programmed here So far, it's feel, it felt really, really agile. Coming to the next section, compositionally, I wanted to bring it right down and then made use of some longs. And I've already shown you all the longs that I've used, but because we have 148 different articulations, I want to dive a bit deeper and play some to you so you get an idea of what they sound like. So we have some extended techniques over here. This one is the core technique patch. So you've got the normal lungs. Then you got the long consort. Some really beautiful harmonics. The flat hands I've played to you, then you have some long surpont. Here are some long sil taster. And these are one of my favorites, the long super soltasta, really, really gentle and soft. That one. And then we also have long soul G. And then also very short ones. So the spiccatos are played to you, then are some consort spiccatos. Some harmonics, which is super lovely. Then brush spiccato and brush spiccato consort. And a pizzicato sound lovely as well. The decorative technique palette I've already shown you. So this is where you have the various tremolos and trills and then we also have an effects section with different types of grace notes semitones or whole tones and two grace notes and up to three notes in a row so it's, it's really versatile and it's got uh, a lot of different articulations to play around with <laughs> 
let's listen to the section where I wanted to make use of the long articulations and see how they sit with one another. For the last section, compositionally, I just repeated what I've done in the beginning just to bring it back and uh, unify it a little bit more. So the important things for me for this library is, first of all, I feel it's super agile and responsive. And uh, second of all, I can now put my own reverb on there as well, make it sit with different live recordings or other instruments. I can kind of meld it a little bit better within the reverb and the amount I want to choose to put on there. This has been played completely dry, but I have prepared a little reverb using the UAD lexicon, and I'll play back the whole composition to see how it sounds with some reverb. That's it from me. Thank you for watching.